acidity, humidity, temperature. These are all variables that determine the health of your vermicomposting system. In this video, what I want to do is to share with you a basic framework that will help you understand what are those key variables that really determine the health of your system and what are some factors or things that you can manipulate and trick in order to make sure that those variables stay within a healthy range. First of all, your vermicomposting system is not just the home of your worms. Your vermicomposting system is an ecosystem and you're trying to create the right conditions for this system to be able to thrive and for the right kind of organisms to have an advantage so they can work together to produce one of the best organic fertilizers that you cannot get at the stores. So let's start with three basic variables. Number one is temperature, number two is acidity, and number three is humidity. There is also two basic elements that will help you regulate these variables, and those are carbon to nitrogen ratio and airflow. So you have three main variables, acidity, temperature, and humidity. And then you have the two things that you can really manipulate in order to impact those variables in a positive way, and that is airflow and carbon to nitrogen ratio. So let's dive deeper into them. Let's talk about temperature. The ideal temperature inside of your vermicomposting system it's right in between 50 and 70 degrees. Worms have a very similar temperature tolerance to human beings. Once the temperature starts to go above 90, they become very, very uncomfortable. And once the temperature surpasses 95 degrees, at that point, the temperature is way too high for the well-being of your worms. Nitrogen, or the food scraps that you add to your system, including coffee grounds, when they begin to decompose, they generate a lot of heat. If you have your warm bins outdoors and you don't have access to a space for air conditioning and you start adding a lot of food scraps, that is going to increase the internal temperature of your system. So with that in mind, what are things that you can do to regulate the temperature inside of your bin? Number one is a carbon to nitrogen ratio. Carbon to nitrogen ratio is probably the one element or variable that you really want to get right. So the ideal ratio is 70% carbon or bedding and 30% nitrogen or food scraps or 50 parts of carbon per one part of nitrogen or food scraps. Because carbon to nitrogen ratio is key when it comes to managing temperature, humidity and acidity, the closer you are to that optimal ratio, the stronger your system will be when it comes to dealing with environmental stressors either inside of the bin or outside of the bin. For example, if you're going through a heat wave, your system is likely to stay cooler because of the amount of carbon that it has. In contrast, if you have a system that is 60% nitrogen or 60% food scraps and only 40% carbon, if the temperature starts to rise, the amount of nitrogen inside of the bin is also very likely to be generating an exorbitant amount of heat. So one of the benefits of understanding what are those key variables that determine the health and well-being of your vermicomposting system is that you know exactly where you need to go when you need to troubleshoot your system. For example, clumping in areas where there is no food is one of the indicators that the temperature inside of the system may be off. So when you see that worms start to clump either on the surface of the bin, right on top of the vermicompost, they start to form piles of worms. That's an indicator that the temperature could be very high. Please do me a favor, please click like and subscribe to my channel and share this video with people that may benefit from getting this information. Because what I'm trying to share with you is tools and frameworks that will allow you to think through different challenges, to troubleshoot issues, and to build a system that is strong and resilient. Let's talk about acidity. Acidity is a pH inside of your vermicompost system and acidity will naturally go higher and your system will naturally tend to be more acidic when you add fresh food scraps. The ideal acidity ratio is usually in between 5 and 9 pH level. There's different things that you can do to influence acidity. I add a lot of eggshells and biochar to my system in order to make sure that the acidity level remains pretty much within range. If you have the right carbon to nitrogen ratio and there is good airflow, you don't have to go out of your way to really measure a lot of these things. What you have to do is to pay attention to the activity inside of the bin, see if the worms are engaged with the food scraps, pay attention if the worms are trying to escape, 
If you add fresh food scrap to your bin and two to three days later, the worms are not touching it, it's either because there is a better food source elsewhere or because the food scraps are too acidic. My population explosion inside of your system, as well as the proliferation of black soldier fly larvae, that's an indication that the system may be more acidic than it needs to be. Let's talk about airflow. Airflow is one of the most important variables, along with carbon to nitrogen ratio, when it comes to keeping your system healthy. Air circulation plays a key role when it comes to the regulation of moisture, which is humidity, as well as temperature. Air circulation allows oxygen to come into the system and it supports the metabolic function of aerobic bacteria, as well as other organisms that are beneficial to your system and also require oxygen to survive. Airflow will also prevent the formation of anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic bacteria is a bacteria that we associate with bad smells. Anaerobic means absence of oxygen. So if oxygen is freely moving through your system more or less, that will make sure that anaerobic bacteria won't have a chance to get ahead. To improve air circulation inside of your vermicomposting system, Think about the structure of the system. If you have plastic bins, it's going to be important for you to drill holes around the bin to make sure that there is enough air coming into the system and also allowing excess moisture to escape the system. The type of bedding that you choose for your vermicomposting system will also influence how much air circulation comes in and out of your bins. For example, I like to use leaves because they naturally create a lot of airflow. Another way to support air circulation inside of your system is to build in air pockets as part of the buffer zones where you're not adding fresh food scraps. Worms require a high level of humidity in order to exchange oxygen with their environment because they breathe through their skin. They require approximately 80% humidity level. Humidity also impacts the microbiology inside of your vermicomposting system. If you watch some of my other videos where I talk about worm nutrition, you know that worms primarily feed on the microorganisms that are feeding on the food scraps that you're adding to your system. For that microbiology to thrive, you need to have a certain level of humidity because one things to start to dry up inside of your being, the microorganisms start to die. There's two potential challenges if humidity within your bin is too low. One of them is your worms are not gonna be able to breathe comfortably. Another potential hazard that comes from having very low humidity is the proliferation of ants. Ants don't like to be wet and they're likely to feel drawn to areas where there is a lot of food, but the humidity level is low. So if you're having issues with ants, the first thing you need to troubleshoot is the humidity level. So if most of your system is carbon or bedding as it should be, the humidity level is likely to stay balanced because carbon material tends to absorb excess humidity and then it will release it as things start to dry up inside of your system. When it comes to humidity, I just open the bin and see if there is condensation happening, see if the surface of the bin is dry, and also, if you have uh, my population explosions regularly, that's an indicator that humidity may be too high and that acidity may also be off. On the other hand, if you notice that your worms are working throughout the whole system, they move around, they gravitate towards fresh food scraps very quickly, you know your system is likely to be working well.